Hi, welcome back to the workshop for the penultimate episode of the ES335 build. It's been a really long road to get to this point, but we're very, very close to getting finished. I will take a giant step forward in this episode by getting all of the finish polished up. So we've had to wait a little while, but we're finally at the stage now where this is hard enough to take a polish. Um, but there's a couple of little jobs I need to get out of the way before we make a start. Firstly, I don't want to get polish and stuff all over the fretboard, so I'm just going to very quickly mask all of that up. Okay, so with that done, we now need to turn our attention to these holes that have been drilled into the top of the guitar and one down here on the side for various fittings etc. I don't want to be getting water into these especially not the small ones because that's going to make the wood swell and that could potentially crack the finish or just lead to all sorts of other problems. So as a way around that I'm going to take some just normal paste wax and I'm going to use that just to fill these holes up and keep the water out as best we can. I'm not worried about the F holes too much because I've still got the foam that I crammed into the body cavities when I was painting it in there and that's going to keep a lot of the water out of there. So to do this I'm literally just going to get a bit of the paste wax onto my finger and rub it into the holes. It also won't do any harm to have wax in these holes when we fit the hardware as well because that will just help lubricate all these tiny little screws going in. Just make our job a little bit easier. Now for these larger holes where the tailpiece studs are going to go, I'm actually going to just take a little bit of tissue. And roll that up into a little plug. poke that in there a so that any water will get absorbed but B I'm just gonna put some wax on top of that as well okay with that done I'll go and fetch some warm water and we can get rubbing down so I've got some warm water and it's just got a bit of hand soap in there and all the soap is to do is to help lubricate things and also draw any grit and muck that's coming off the guitar into the water and keep it off the paper. And just got a little eraser that I'm going to use for a block. There's quite a lot of curvy bits on this guitar, so I'll probably do a fair amount of it with just my fingers. But if I can use a block for as much as possible, it'll just help keep things nice and flat. I've got plenty of clean paper towels. Like I say, just try and keep the water down as much as possible. And it's literally just a case of I like to sand in small circles. I'm starting off with 600 grit wet and dry. And I think it's really important to say good quality abrasives. The cost differential between good and not so good abrasives isn't really that much. And for the amount that you're going to use on a job like this, it's false economy not to spend that money. I did mention when I was spraying this that I was getting a much better result with the HVLP gun that I'm using and I'm able to kind of appreciate that almost instantaneously when I'm doing this because just that short session of rubbing with the 600 
has taken me through quite a lot of the orange peel which is great because that means this could be quite a quick job and it's absolutely freezing in the workshop today so in those conditions quick equals good Now this section I've been working on here is virtually there for the 600 so that's really really good news. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm just going to work my way around the rest of the top get it all flatted down to 600 and then we can come back and look at the next stage. And I'm just going to demonstrate what I mean by the flattening off process here. If you look in this little area, you can see this matte sections where the sandpaper's hit and there's little shiny sections where it hasn't. And those are the, the kind of low spots in the finish. So I'm just gonna very quickly hit that with a bit of wet and dry. And once you've done this a few times, you can actually start to feel it through the paper when you're getting it close to where it needs to be. And I think you can even hear that it makes a slightly different sound. And you can see now, a lot of those little, in fact most in that little area of the little low spots have completely gone with just that little bit of rubbing. Okay, so that's the whole of this top now done with 600 um, and it's feeling absolutely lovely. For reference, this has taken me the whole of the album Hot Fuss by The Killers, Mr. Brightside twice, obviously, to rub this down. There's one or two places where there's some tiny little orange peel still in it, but that's not a major issue because I'm now going to hit it with some 800 paper exactly the same just a, a little bit finer paper and that should take out the last of the orange peel and start to get somewhere near a finish that we can polish up Okay, so that's all the, the 800 done. Really is starting to feel nice now. There's no low spots at all now. It's a perfectly uniform matte finish. So now I'm gonna go in with some 1200 paper, but instead of using a block, I'm just gonna do this by hand now. You're hardly taking off any material at this point. So you don't need to worry about kind of rubbing hollows or anything in. And if you are having to do that, it's because you simply haven't sanded enough with the other grits. Okay, so that's the 1200 done. It's, it's only taken about five minutes to do that. There's, there's a lot less to do when you get to this stage. Now, normally at this stage, I'd get the buffer out and I'd be getting some compound on and polishing, but this time I'm gonna try something slightly different. And you might say after six months of hard work to get it to this stage that experimenting might not be a great idea. Little bit of me agrees with you, but if you don't try new things, you never go anywhere, do you? And what I'm gonna do, and this is something I used on the fretboard actually to polish up the mother of pearl, which is why 
I'm thinking it could be a good idea is I'm going to use one of these 3M Trizac pads and this is 3000 grit so this is much much finer than I'd ever polish before I'd only ever go to 1200 but I thought I'd just give it a go to see what it does the reason I'm going with this is polishing is quite a risky business actually there's all sorts of things you can mess up when you're polishing you're using a power mop it's a little bit less controlled and you can burn through if you're not careful. My thinking is if I can use the 3000 grit pad to kind of get a bit of a, a gloss on it before we go to the mop, I'm spending a lot less time with the polisher on it and hopefully that will reduce the risk as well. And I've done a little bit of research. Um, it's perfectly fine to use these wet, so here goes. Oh, okay. I'm going to change the camera angle. I'm going to see if I can get this in the shot because that is actually quite a nice gloss on that. I mean, it wouldn't work as a finished polish. You can still see some scratches in there, but it's way, way better than you'd get with a 1200. I'll just see if I can get this to reflect the light properly. Be perhaps seeing that upper horn area. And to say I was only really rubbing at that for a minute, it's, it's come up really nicely. So yeah, I think that experiment could be deemed a success. I just need to do the rest of the body now. Okay, so I've got my buffer. Um, I've cleaned the pad and that's kind of nice and damp. I'm going to be using Furicla G3 rubbing compound. This is water-based and it's specifically designed to break down with friction and moisture. So the action of the mop and the water on the body will actually break this down into finer and finer particles and it will kind of polish this up very, very nicely. So you don't need to go mad with it. You really don't need much at all. Spray it with some fresh water. And hopefully you can see there that's come up to an absolute mirror shine absolutely over the moon with that okay so with that done it's time to turn it over and do exactly the same thing on the back i'm not going to film that you've seen enough sanding for a little while so i'll pick up again once we've got that buffed out Okay, so that's the back all done. Um, I'm really, really happy with that. I think that looks spot on. You can really see the shape of the, the arch top and the back now. We've got a bit of a polish on. So that only really leaves us the ribs and the neck to do. And in both those cases, we're gonna take a slightly different approach because they're actually quite small areas. So you don't really need to put quite as much work in to get a decent finish and also kind of using the mop on this side profile of the guitar is just a recipe for disaster. Um, the chances of burning through the finish are massively, massively increased. 
So I'm only really left with the option of rubbing it down and polishing it by hand. But it's not a problem because like I say, there's so little of it, it won't take that long. So again, I'm just gonna start with some 600 paper on your razor. Start to work this down a bit. I absolutely love the look of this back. I think it's very pretty. And then I'm gonna come off the block just where the binding hits the side of the guitar. And just make sure there's no kind of step there. And that's pretty much all it needs. It's gone very, very quick. So step up to 800 grit, just let that soak for a second or two. And just rinse and repeat. Then onto some 1200, as quick as that. And then if the back of this guitar is my new favorite thing, these Trizac pads are my second favorite thing. I've already got an order in for some 5,000 grit for the next finishing job I do, just to see how much easier that will make my life. They're not cheap, they're about a fiver a piece, but time is money. And if it also gives me a better finish, I consider that to be money well spent. Okay. So with that done, I've just got a polishing rag and put a little bit of water on it. And then just hand buff this. Just needs a tiny little bit more work in this section. And just see if we can catch the lights in that that's come up absolutely beautifully so I'm going to continue with the rest of these ribs off camera and then I'll pick up again and we'll do the neck in a few minutes well we're getting there now and um, we've only got two little bits to do we've got the back of the neck and the front of the headstock um, and I'm going to take two different approaches to these two different areas the back of the neck I don't want too glossy because if they're too glossy they just feel a bit gummy under your hands sometimes. Um, so it will be shiny but it won't be like that super super high gloss that we're getting everywhere else. So to get the finish that I want I'm going to go with some 600 wet and dry just to get all the orange peel out of the back of the neck. It is a nice flat finish. And then again, I'm just gonna go at it with this Trizac pad straight from 600 and just see what that gives me. That will give me a bit of a shine, but without there being that kind of super high gloss finish. And I might just hit that very, very softly with a little bit of polish. I think that's just about right. There's a little bit of a gloss, but it's not going to cause it to be sticky. And I think that is probably about as much as we need to do on that. So I'm just going to do exactly the same thing on the back of the headstock, and then we can turn it over and do the front. But the front, I want that to be absolutely high gloss. If anything, I want it to be glossier than the body because I want to see if I can really show off the mother of pearl inlay. Okay, so just the front of the headstock now. I'm gonna do all of this with the blocks. I want it to be really nice and flat. And I'm starting with 400 just to flatten off the little bits of drop filling that we did last time. 
I expect that to go very, very quickly though. Okay, let's see if we can get that. Bit hard to see in this shot, but it has come up absolutely beautifully. I'll bring you in for a closer shot in a second. But that is the last of the polishing done. So I'm gonna get this masking tape off. And we now need to give everything a good clean up, get rid of any residue of the polishing process, any bits of stickiness left by the masking tape, etc. And we're ready, finally, to start putting this thing together. Now that is exciting. Well, it's been a huge amount of work to get the guitar to this stage, but we're now ready to start putting some parts onto it. So I'm gonna be back very, very soon with the final instalment, and we'll get this one put together and see what it sounds like. So as always, hit the like button if you've enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you very, very soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.